Hello everyone. Today in a nutshell I shall be dealing with antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. Only few salient points will be mentioned here so that you can remember it easily. So as the name suggests it's an autoimmune disorder. So let's see what are its main features. Number one, there is a hypercoagulable state. So there is risk of thrombosis in both arteries and veins. Another important feature in antiphospholipid antibody syndrome is the presence of antibodies. In this condition, you will find a lot of antibodies. These antibodies are against phospholipid beta 2 glycoprotein 1 complex, against the cardiolipid antigen, against the lupus anticoagulant, and against protein S. So, in this condition, you will find a lot of antibodies. However, the main antibody which you're always going to find in this condition is against the phospholipid beta 2 glycoprotein 1 complex. So if you remember this is the main antibody which you find in apple. Patient with this syndrome also gives false positive test for syphilis and this is due to antibodies binding with anti-cardiolipid antigen. So if you find any case in which the serology has shown that uh, syphilis is positive so you should check whether the patient is having APLA syndrome or not. The last and one of the most important feature which you will find in this condition is spontaneous recurrent miscarriage. Well this pregnancy related complication is the outcome of the hypercoagulable state which I just mentioned in the beginning. Now coming on to the types of APLA syndrome. There are two main types, the primary and secondary. Uh, if the disease occurs in absence of any other related disorder, then we will classify it as primary APLA syndrome. And if it is associated with other autoimmune disorder, like SLE, rheumatoid arthritis or scleroderma then it then we see it as secondary APLA syndrome. Now how to make the diagnosis of APLA? Well it's quite simple. We need to just demonstrate the antibodies and if some clinical features are present additionally then it makes the diagnosis more easy. Uh, Remember that the most important antibody which we must demonstrate is the antibody against phospholipid beta 2 glycoprotein 1 complex. And we should also search for clinical features which suggest a hypercoagulable state, like um, past history of miscarriage or uh, DVT. Coming on to the treatment. Uh, treatment aims at preventing the blood from hypercoagulating. So the treatment options are we can use aspirin, we can use heparin, we can use warfarin. Uh, however, we should be careful uh, that uh, we should not use warfarin during pregnancy as it may lead to fetal malformations. Uh, well, for refractory cases, we have to go for plasmapheresis. Uh, now coming on to the summary of APLA syndrome. Uh, well, you can use the mnemonic HAMS to remember it easily. Uh, A stands for hypercoagulable state. A stands for the various antibodies that you will see in this condition. M stands for miscarriage, which are spontaneous and recurrent. S stands for syphilis. Uh, remember, I told you that patient with APLA syndrome gives a false positive test for syphilis. So. This mnemonic hands might come handy sometimes in your examination, so please do remember it. And that's all for now. So, if you have any more interesting info on this topic, then please do leave your comments and kindly refer your standard textbook while you are studying and making notes. Uh, see you next time. Till then, goodbye.